Hello everyone, this is Dr. Minakshi Gupta. I am going to continue my topic drugs for the bronchial asthma. This is second video on drugs for the bronchial asthma. So in the first video, I have discussed about the symptoms of asthma, then the various types of asthma that is extrinsic and intrinsic and the extrinsic whether it is of atopic and non-atopic and then there is a status asthmaticus that is also there then a cardiac asthma. Then the third one is a pathophysiology of bronchial asthma. So in the pathophysiology the most important is what earlier was considered bronchial asthma that is purely a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. So, it is a purely a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction where what happens the antigen and this is a red color that is an antigen. This is going to interact with the black color antibodies. Antigen, they are going to bind on this with the antibody which are already there on the surface of mast cell. And what will happen with the antigen antibody reaction? There will be degranulation of this mast cell and histamine that is released, which is going to cause the bronchoconstriction. So, it was purely considered as a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. But later on, what like presently, now it is recognized that it is not purely a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. So, there is a inflammatory changes. That is also there in the AOA and associated with bronchial hyperreactivity. So, how we can uh, treat this bronchial asthma by giving a various drugs which are going to act at a different different stages of this. So, you can see here what all we can give at this. Like if the person is having a bronchoconstriction, so we can give the bronchodilator. This is a number one. Then there is a release of leukotrienes, cystinyl leukotriene which is going to act on cystinyl leukotriene receptor. So, we can give cystinyl leukotriene receptor antagonist or we can inhibit the formation of leukotrienes which is formed in the this mast cell. So, by giving the 5 lipoxygenase inhibitor. So, leukotriene and these 2A and 2B that is 5 lipoxygenase inhibitor they are the they come under leukotriene modulator. Then number 3 is mast cell stabilizer which is going to inhibit this degranulation of the mast cell because if the degranulation of the mast cell happens then only all these mediators they are released and the most important is we can give the patient anti-inflammatory drug and the very first reaction this interaction of antigen and antibody here also this step can also be inhibited by anti-IG antibodies okay so these are the drug which already I have shown you in my first video so bronchodilator anti-inflammatory drug leukotriene modulator and then we have a mast cell stabilizer and monoclonal anti-IG antibody. For the full detail of the pathophysiology of the bronchial asthma, you can check the link in the description box. So, in today's video is all about this bronchodilator. I will be covering this bronchodilator. So, before starting the bronchodilator, you must know neurohumeral control of the airway. So, that is very, very important. So, how it is controlled? So, bronchial tone that is mainly controlled by all the three system, parasympathetic, sympathetic and noradrenergic and non-cholinergic. So, this is suppose a bronchial smooth muscle. So, the tone of this is controlled by already I have told all parasympathetic, sympathetic and noradrenergic, noradrenergic. So, main tone is a parasympathomimetic. So, that is predominantly, predominant tone. So, parasympathetic how they are or acetylcholine, the neurotransmitter for parasympathetic is acetylcholine, how they are going to act on the bronchial smooth muscle. So, on the bronchial smooth muscle, there are M3 receptors, they are there. So, the acetylcholine, it is going to act on the M3 receptor and what it is going to do, this M3 receptor, 
it is going to cause the activation of guanine cyclase and this guanine cyclase this is going to convert gtp into cyclic gmp and this cyclic gmp this is going to cause a bronco constriction right so this is about the para sympathetic tone on the other hand the sympathetic sympathetic innervation that is not much in the bronchial tree so they are only in the glands bronchial epithelium and blood vessels they are there so but the circulating catecholamines definitely they are going to act on this so they are going to act through beta 2 receptor so circulating catecholamines they are going to act through as and to beta 2 receptor and this beta 2 receptor they are going to stimulate the adenyl cyclase and which is going to convert this atp into cyclic amp and this is going to cause the bronco dilatation then so two system ho gaye aapke this is a parasympathomimetic and this is a sympathomimetic so here i'll write sympathomimetic and here para sympathetic then the third one is nor adrenergic नॉर कॉलिनर्जिक इसमें मेन क्या है द मेन न्यूरो ट्रांसमिटर दैट इज एन ओ एंड द अदर वन इज वी हैव अमीन एंड न्यूरोपैप्टाइड यू कैन से सब्सटेंस पी दैट इज देयर सो दिस इज गोइंग टू कॉज अ ब्रोंको डायलिटेशन एंड दीज टू दे आर गोइंग टू कॉज अ ब्रोंको कंस्ट्रक्शन सो इन नटशेल वॉट आई वॉन्ट टू से See parasympathomimetic or a parasympathetic nervous system, they are going to cause the bronchoconstriction. Okay, is it? What is it? Your bronchoconstriction. Whereas sympathetic, that is going to cause a bronchodilator. So here, what we want? We want a bronchoconstriction that is there, and we want a bronchodilatation in a bronchial asthma. So what kind of drug can cause a bronchodilatation? If we are going to give a sympathomimetic, that is going to cause a bronchodilatation, and if we are going to give a parasympatholytic or anticholinergic drug so anticholinergic drug they are going to cause the bronchodilatation or yahan pe kya hai adrenergic drug or sympathomimetic they are going to cause the bronchodilatation so under the bronchodilator drug what we have we have a three group of drug ek to aapka sympathomimetic aa gaya this is the number one then we have a anticholinergic drug this is number 2 and the number 3 is methyl xanthin so these three group of drug they act as a bronchodilator so another important uh, thing which is going to cause a bronchoconstriction that is a, another mediator that is adenosine this also causes a bronchoconstriction now coming to the bronchodilator drug sympatho first one i will take sympatho mimetic We'll start with the so sympathomimetic. It can be selective. It can be non-selective. Okay, ये आपकी क्या हो सकती है non-selective भी हो सकती है और it can be selective. So under the non-selective, we have a epinephrine, isoprenaline, and oxyprenaline. under the selective we have a salbutamol another name for the salbutamol is albuterol then terbutaline theek okay. hai then we have a bitolterol phenolterol then buterol so all these they are short acting beta agonist 
Then we have a long acting beta agonist. They are salmeterol. We have a formaterol and R formaterol. So they are the long acting beta agonist. Okay. So this is the abbreviation. For this. So, whatever is there, whether it is a selective or it is a non selective, the mechanism of action of sympathomimetic it is same. So, how they are going to act mechanism of action? So, on the just in the previous uh, slide, I have shown you. Hmm. This one. So, how they are going to cause the bronchodilatation? They are going to act through beta 2 receptor. Pe kaam they are going to act through beta 2 receptor. And by activating this beta 2 receptor, they are going to stimulate the second messenger that is adenyl cyclase, which is going to convert ATP into cyclic EMP. So, all these drugs, whether it is a non selective or selective, so they are going to cause what? Increase in the level of cyclic EMP. So, there is an increase in the level of cyclic EMP due to stimulation of beta 2 receptor which are G protein coupled receptor and they are going to stimulate adenyl cyclase. So, this is okay and beta 2 receptor they are also there. This is on the bronchial smooth muscle and they are also going to stimulate the beta 2 receptor on the surface of the mast cell and what they are going to do? They inhibit the mediator release, mast cell mediator release that is inhibited. Then they are also going to inhibit the microvascular permeability. This is the number 3 and number 4 is they are going to increase the ciliary activity, micro ciliary activity they are going to increase in the bronchi. But the main important is these two. Okay. Now, what is the basic difference among these uh, non-selective and uh, selective? See, non-selective like epinephrine, epinephrine or adrenaline, it is going to act through. So, I'll write here. Epinephrine, how it is going to act? It is going to act through both alpha and beta receptor. So, beta 1 and beta 2. So, they are going to exert not only beta 2 action but alpha action and beta 1 action apart from beta 2. So, because of this what will happen? The patient will show a few adverse effects. Okay? Like tachycardia will be there. Okay? This may be your tachycardia will be there. Patient may go for the arrhythmia. Patient there may be precipitation of any other cardiac uh, disease. Cardiac like. So, patient may uh, have all that. So, because of this epinephrine, it is not preferred nowadays for the treatment of the bronchial asthma. Earlier, it was used for the acute bronchial asthma when we did not have a selective beta agonist. So, but nowadays it is very rarely used. It is sometimes used as a status asthmaticus because it is going to reduce the pulmonary edema. Okay. Then we have a isoprenaline and orciprenaline. So, they do not have any alpha component, but they have also beta 1 non selective beta receptor agonist. So, beta 1 and beta 2 action they are there. So, this may be kya hai and the selectivity for beta 1 and beta 2 that is not there with isoprenaline and orciprenaline. And again, we are going to prefer the selective over the non selective. This one. Okay? So, among the selective, we have a salbutamol, terbutaline, short acting. See? No, short acting me kya hai? The short acting beta receptor agonist. I'll just write a few two drug salbutamol. Suppose I'll write salbutamol and terbutaline. So they are short acting. If we are going to give it by inhalational route, apne pressurized dose meter inhaler, if you are going to give, then what will happen? Bronchodilatation will happen with it. 5 minutes. That means where we can use it, we can use it to abort the acute attack. 
ठीक है इसको एक्यूट अटैक के लिए वी कैन यूज इट एंड ड्यूरेशन ऑफ एक्शन बिकॉज इट इज अट एक्टिंग ड्यूरेशन ऑफ एक्शन ऑफ दिस ड्रग इट इज टू टू फोर आर सो दिस इज ओनली फॉर द एक्यूट अटैक एंड नॉट फॉर द प्रोफाइल डैक्सिस ठीक है सो वी मेनली यूज इट and the pressurized meter dose inhaler so with the inhalation the bronchodilatation that will happen within a 5 minutes then if i write a long acting if i write a long acting beta agonist isme salmeterol and formeterol okay so their duration of action is 6 to 2 12 hours, so we can give it a BD dose, and they are used for prophylaxis. Where we can use it, they are used for the prophylaxis. Now, in this, both of these, salmeterol and formeterol. Salmeterol is slow acting, and this is the fast acting. So, formeterol we can use for both. This formeterol. it is used for both prophylaxis plus acute attack p okay so formeterol the most commonly used beta agonist drug in the treatment of bronchial asthma it is a formeterol so most of the preparation you will be seeing in the combination with a corticosteroid that is a formeterol because it is a fast acting and its duration of action is also a long so we can use this drug both for the prophylaxis as well as for the acute attack so but usually we do not use this formeterol alone for the prophylaxis or this long acting beta agonistic drug though we are using it for the prophylaxis but we do not use it alone the reason is if we are using it alone the few cases of bronchial asthma worsening of the bronchial asthma that has been seen and why the worsening of the bronchial asthma has been observed with the continuous use of long acting bronchial asthma beta agonistic drug because once we are putting the patient on the long acting agar usko long acting dete hain for the prophylaxis patient is taking long acting beta agonistic drug alone and patient will be feeling relieved but the underlying pathology of bronchial asthma is inflammation so inflammatory the underlying disease it continues the so progression of the disease that is there so what will happen slowly over the time there is a worsening of the symptom so usually the long acting beta agonistic drug we ask the patient to use it along with inhalational corticosteroid another reason uh, for not using this one alone it causes the especially this short acting down regulation of beta 2 receptor so that means responsiveness of this drug that decreases over the time but if we are going to use it along with the corticosteroid they are going to restore the responsiveness so this is the another reason why it is used along with the inhalational corticosteroid so remember one thing short acting beta agonistic drug they are for the acute attack because the bronchodilatation that will happen within the 5 minutes long acting bronch beta 2 agonistic drug formeterol for both acute as well as for the prophylaxis whereas salmeterol only for the prophylaxis and we prefer to use this one along with the inhalational corticosteroid to restore the responsiveness of the beta 2 uh, agonistic drug because uh, the responsiveness uh, is uh, decreased over the time because of the down regulation of the beta 2 receptor okay so that is the reason uh, the combination of this it is given with the inhalational corticosteroid now coming to the side effect overall side effect with the beta 2 agonistic drug what are the side effect we see the most common side effect with the beta 2 agonistic drug is seen as most common is tremors theek hai ye sabse common hai then second one is a it can cause tachycardia theek hai especially if it is a non selective with this also we can see the tachycardia third one is a 
tolerance because of the down regulation of the receptor there may be tolerance and then there is a another is hypokalemia that is also seen so one is a insulin with the insulin we see the hypokalemia and another one is a beta 2 agonistic drug where with this also we see the hypokalemia and hyper glycemia so this is about the beta 2 agonistic drug or sympathomimetic drug so here what you need to remember sympathomimetic nowadays we use only the selective non selective they are not used because of their side effect and because of their um, non selective action we do not want cardiac uh, effects so we prefer selective beta agonistic drug and in that short acting hai aapke paas and another one is a long acting short acting that is only for the acute attack okay there is a long acting long acting mein bhi do naam yaad rakho salmeterol slow acting as for slow parmeterol is a fast acting so both of them we can use it prophylaxis but formeterol we can use for the acute as well as for the prophylaxis and remember always use it along with the inhalational cortico steroid so this is about the sympathomimetic drug now the coming to the second one that is a anticholinergic drug okay so in the anticholinergic drug we have here also long acting and a short acting so short acting we have a ipratropium oxytropium this is short acting muscarinic agonistic okay anticholinergic drug and then we have a not agonistic drug it is a anticholinergic drug and then we have a tiotropium and you me cladinium so they are the long acting and they are the short acting muscarinic antagonist samas lamas muscarinic antagonist now how this group of drug they are going to act so again same thing so m3 receptor what they are going to cause bronchoconstriction so they are going to block the m3 receptor on the bronchial muscle so by blocking the m3 receptor what will happen they are going to cause the inhibit the bronchoconstriction so vagal tone that is if they are going to reverse the action of that para sympathomimetic they are going to block the action of acetylcholine and they are mainly all of them they are the quaternary compound and we give this also by inhalation root ठीक है इसको भी हम इनहेलर वाले फॉर्म में देते हैं सो बिकॉज ऑफ दैट वॉट विल हैपन इफ यू आर गोइंग टू गिव इट बाई इनहलेशन रूट यूजली एंटीकॉलिंग नर्जिक ड्रग साइड इफेक्ट ड्राई माउथ ब्लरिंग ऑफ द विजन रिटेंशन दैट ऑल दे आर सीन विद एंटीकॉलिंग नर्जिक ड्रग बट दिस ड्रग इट इज अ कॉटनरी कंपाउंड रिमेंबर टर्शरी टी एल टर्शरी कंपाउंड टी is a tertiary compound and is a lipid soluble so tertiary compound they are mostly lipid soluble they can cross the blood brain barrier they can cross the placental barrier everything whereas a quaternary compound they are the lipid insoluble so and we are giving this drug by inhalational route so from the bronchi to the systemic circulation their absorption that is very very minimal so anticholinergic side effect they are minimal seen with this okay iske sath aap dry mouth and that is not seen like with the atropine uh, atropine se kya hai the, there will be mucus plug that will be formed in the airway so here it is that plug it is not formed then urinary retention it is with the lama with the very if the patient is elderly then we can see a lama other sorry with the lama we can see the urinary retention otherwise uh, so be careful when you are using this one if the patient is having a benign prostatic hypertrophy otherwise that is also very uh, not so commonly seen even with this so what i want to say anticholinergic drug when we are giving it by inhalational route all these the anticholinergic side effect they are very very less now disadvantage of this group of drug is so they are going to act not only through 
M3 receptor, but they also activate this M2 receptor, which are present presynaptically. So, by activating, because selectivity, they are not particularly selective for this, they are also going to act through M2 receptor, which are present presynaptically. So, they are going to cause the release of acetylcholine. Okay. By acting through presynaptic, so they are going to cause the release of acetylcholine. So, action is not that much. They are going to act, this group of drug, they are going to act or how? They are going to inhibit the action of acetylcholine. So, acetylcholine, it cannot act on this. But by this, what will happen? The acetylcholine will be released. Then out of this, ipraatropium, that is a short acting and Thiotropium, they are long acting because they are the lipid soluble. They stay there for a longer time. Quaternary compound and lipid soluble, they will be there for a longer time. And this group of drug, they are mainly used for the more effective for the COPD. They are more effective for COPD. This is more effective rather than in a bronchial asthma. COPD that is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. What we say? The vagal tone that is more in the larger bronchi as compared to the smaller. So, they are going to reverse the vagal tone. That's why they are more effective for the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And usually this group of drug, they are also given with the short acting beta 2 agonist. Ipraatropium. It is more effective when we are giving with the beta 2 agonist for the bronchial asthma. So, this is about the anticholinergic drug. Now, coming to the third group of drug that is methylxanthine. So, in a methylxanthine, the drugs, this group of drug is also uh, not very commonly used for the uh, bronchial asthma. It is mainly used for the COPD. The group of drugs which comes under this, we have a theophylline. We may have a doxyphylline, then we have a aminophylline. Now, how this group of drug they act? What is their mechanism of action? Okay. So, this group of the drug they act by inhibiting phosphodiesterase enzyme. Now, which subtype of phosphodiesterase? 3 and 4. This one is present in the bronchial smooth muscle, whereas phosphodiesterase 4, this is present on the surface of mast cell or inflammatory cells. So, these enzymes, they are responsible for the metabolism of cyclic AMP. What happens? When we give this ATP that is converted into cyclic AMP with this pathway and this is further metabolized into 5 AMP by this phosphodiesterase enzyme. Now this group of the drug, they are going to inhibit this and this phosphodiesterase, they are the subtypes 3 that is present in the bronchial smooth muscle. So, they are going to inhibit this one bronchial smooth muscles, even in the blood vessels, even in the cardiac muscle, they are also it is there. So, they are going to inhibit this phosphodiesterase and ultimately what will happen? The They are going to inhibit the metabolism of this cyclic AMP and there is again a increased level of cyclic AMP and this causes the bronco dilatation. This is number one. Number two is they are going to inhibit the action of adenosine by A1 airway and A3 again it is on the inflammatory cell. So, they are going to inhibit the bronchoconstriction because adenosine causes the bronchoconstriction and they are adenosine antagonist. Okay? They are going to inhibit the action of adenosine. So, by that it is going to cause a bronchodilatation. This is number 2. Number 3 is at very high concentration, they are going to increase the 
release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum but this is seen only at high dose and then uh, recently what they have they are going to they have found they are going to activate the action of histone deacetylase so by that they exert anti inflammatory action okay so these are seen at therapeutic dose number 1 number 2 and number 3 this is only seen at high dose so this is about the mechanism of action of methyl xanthine how we give it we give it by oral route but yes the it, it has got a irritant property when you give it by oral route gastric irritation that is there we can give it by in a, in a rectal route that suppositories that is also available it can cause a rectal inflammation and if you are going to give it by im route it can cause the um, painful pain at the site of injection and if you are giving it by iv route it can cause a um chest pain okay so it has got the irritant property widely distributed in the tissue and it is mainly metabolized by this is important it is mainly metabolized by the enzyme 1a2 okay so this enzyme it has got the property of induction as well as inhibition so important the drug interaction they are seen this is important here ठीक है फार्माकोकाइनेटिक में दिस पॉइंट इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट सो इंपॉर्टेंट ड्रग इंटरेक्शन दे आर सीन विद दिस ग्रुप ऑफ ड्रग नंबर 2 द काइनेटिक ऑफ दिस थियोफाइलिन इट चेंजेस फ्रॉम फर्स्ट ऑर्डर टू जीरो ऑर्डर सो विद द इंक्रीजिंग डोज वंस द काइनेटिक चेंजेस सो एंजाइम दे आर सैचुरेबल metabolizing enzyme of this one is a saturable so when the kinetic changes from first order to zero order then what will happen with increasing dose the plasma concentration it increases disproportionately number 3 the elimination of this drug it is faster kis mein in children theek hai but in premature it is slow elimination in elderly it is slow isme kya hai fast so you have to see the dose kisme aapne kam deni hai kisme aapne zyada deni hai so these are the uh, important point related with the theophylline so what are the important drug interaction they are seen with this with the enzyme inducer and with the enzyme inhibitor if you are going to give it with the enzyme inducer you have to increase the dose kon kon se enzyme inducer like phenytoin phenobarbital rifampicin they are there and enzyme inhibitor like ciprofloxacin erythromycin cimetidine so they are the enzyme inhibitor you can write the name here phenytoin phenobarbital phenobarbital carbamazepine rifampicin theek hai and inhibitor aap kya gaye cimetidine ciprofloxacin erythromycin theek hai then another thing is their safety margin that is very narrow it is 5 to 20 microgram per theek okay? hai so this is a safety margin of plasma concentration itni plasma concentration more than this it is going to cause a side effect side effect they are mainly related with git CNS and CVS, ठीक है सो लाइक नोजिया वॉमिटिंग डिसपेप्सिया देन सी एन एस में आपको नर्वसनेस हेड एक दैट विल बी देयर एन सी वी सी में हाइपो टेंशन विल बी देयर सी एन एस में इवन एट हाई डोजेज इट कैन कॉज अ सीजर्स ऑल्सो ठीक है डायोरेसिस दैट कैन ऑल्सो हैपन विद सी वी एस ठीक है एंड द 
पेशन कैन गो फॉर द अरिदनिया इसमें हाइपोटेंशन अरिदनिया सीन कोप एंड पेशन में डाई इफ वी आर गोइंग टू गिव द हाई डोज ऑफ दिस थियोफाइल सो सेफ्टी इशू दैट इज देयर विद दिस ग्रुप ऑफ ड्रग एंड दिस इज आल्सो वी यूज इट फॉर द मेनली फॉर द COPD because of uh, theophylline you can say it's important drug interaction we have to see the dose of this drug then it's kinetic theek hai then it's safety margin so all these they make it not to be preferred for the treatment of the bronchial asthma it is used as a adjuvant drug along with the beta 2 agonist ya fir hum corticosteroid along with that we give it and it is used for the COPD. So we tried to find the selective this PDE four inhibitor. So, okay, I'll write here PDE four inhibitor. so that the side effect because there is a many side effect of theophylline is there so in order to reduce this there is a many they are there but only one drug that is roflomilast that is only which is approved by us fda but that is also approved for only copd not for the bronchial asthma so this is all about the bronco dilator drug so here i have finished uh, three bronco dilator one is sympathomimetic another one is anticholinergic and the third one is a methyl xanthines now few of the important mcq based on this now the first one is all of the following drug useful in the bronchial asthma they are bronco dilators except कौन कौन सी है थियोफाइलिन यस दिस इज अ ब्रोंको डायलेटर सैलमेट्रॉल थियोफाइलिन मिथाइल जेंथिन मैंने करवाया सैलमेट्रॉल इट इज अ सिंपैथोमाइमेटिक ठीक है लॉन्ग एक्टिंग बीटा एगोनिस्टिक बैक्लोमिथासोन दिस इज स्टीरॉइड इट इज अ एंटी इंफ्लेमेटरी इप्राट्रोपियम दिस इज अ एंटी कोलिनर्जिक सो यस व्हाट इज द करेक्ट चॉइस करेक्ट चॉइस इट इज अ बैक्लोमिथासोन कमिंग टू द सेकंड वन Which of the following is a long-acting sympathomimetic? So long-acting metro. This means this word is a metro. So salmeterol. This is salmeterol or yeah, formeterol. That is a long-acting. Now advantage of salmeterol. Abhi hua. What is the advantage? Shorter duration of action. No. More potency. Longer duration of action. And lesser side effect. Cardiac effect. Both of them are lesser because they are selective beta two agonistic. drug ipratropium used in bronchial asthma is ipratropium kya hai aapki beta sympathomimetic no methyl xanthine it is a methyl xanthine aapki kaun si hoti methyl xanthine that is Theophylline, anti-cholinergic. Yes, ipratropium bromide. That is a anti-cholinergic drug. Theophylline overdose causes what? Okay. So toxicity of theophylline. I told you mainly related with the GIT, related with the CNS and CVS. GIT wala ab dekhlo. Then CVS, CNS, CNS wala seizure. That is there. Okay. Uske baad next. In a patient of chronic asthma on treatment with theophylline, which of the following should not be used to treat upper respiratory tract infection? Ampicillin, cefalexin, erythromycin, and all, because this is metabolized by this. So it shows the drug interaction. With the enzyme inducer and enzyme inhibitor, so erythromycin, it is an enzyme inhibitor, so should not be used with this. This is all about the bronco dilator drug. So I will be giving a, a link of uh, 
previous the first video you can check that and then i will be giving another link for the receptor down regulation so you can check that also in the description box if you have any query you can ask that also in the comment section that's all about today's lecture in the next video i will be taking the rest of the drug which we use for the treatment of bronchial asthma